Students, in this second installment of my series of special topics lectures reviewing chapters two through three and then eventually four and five, I'm going to begin by teaching you how to name stuff. Well, specifically how to name chemical compounds. Are you ready? Let's begin. So when we name ionic compounds such as NaCl or CSF, we follow these rules. First, the atom on the left, the cation, in this case sodium or cesium up here, is called by its regular name if it's in groups one through three, or columns one through three of the periodic table. If not, especially if you're talking about an element that's in the D or F blocks of the periodic table, then it's called by its regular name with a Roman numeral added to it after to indicate its charge. The reason is because elements that are in the D or F blocks often can exist as multiple different cations with different charges depending on what they bond to. Whereas everything in column one will always exist in an ionic compound as having a plus one charge. Everything in column two will always exist as having a plus two charge. So there's no point in putting a Roman numeral next to column one and two people. Just the other cations. Hopefully you're okay with that. So next is the anion, which would be chlorine or fluorine in these examples shown here, is given the name that it usually has, chlorine or fluorine, except that the ene part of it is replaced with the suffix ide. So up here it would be called chloride or fluoride. Got it? So up here then we would call this sodium chloride, and we don't have to say sodium one because it's in column one of the periodic table. This would be called cesium fluoride. Hopefully pretty good with that. Let's see how comfortable you really are with this by giving you some questions. I want you to name the following ionic compounds. Now I'm not going to answer this for you here, but we we'll invite you to do it on your own. However, I'll give you a couple of tips. Please remember that for metals that are not found in columns one or two of the periodic table, that is metals that are found in the D or F blocks, you have to determine what charge they have and then put that charge in Roman numerals after the metal's name in the final name. The reason is because those metals can exist as potentially having different charges. One exception to that is aluminum. Aluminum always exists as having a plus three charge in all ionic compounds. So you don't need to put uh, aluminum and then Roman numeral three after it. You can just say aluminum followed by the name of the anion. Now let's turn to another subject, that of polyatomic ions. Now some ions are made of multiple atoms bonded together. These are called polyatomic ions. Most polyatomic ions have weird non-systematic names, so you just have to memorize them. Now I want you, my students, to memorize the names, charges, and formulas of the following polyatomic ions. In the cation category, we have this, NH4 plus one, which is called ammonium. And in the anion category, we have these polyatomic anions. Now if you need to, please make sure that you pause here, review these, and ensure that you have all of the formulas, names, and charges of these memorized before we go on. Okay then, let's go on, asking you a question. I want you to name the following ionic compounds, keeping in mind that all of these include one or more polyatomic ions. Please keep in mind further that if you're dealing with any metals that are not in column one or two, then you'll have to determine what their charge is, and then you'll have to make sure that you put Roman numerals with that charge after that metal's name in the final name you generate. One exception to this, once again, is aluminum, which always exists as a plus three charge in the ionic compounds. So you do not need to put aluminum three. You just can put aluminum followed by the name of the anion that follows it. I'll let you do this on your own. However, if you wish, I'll put a link here to a separate video once I show you how to do some of these. You feel comfortable? Good, let's take a look at some more questions. I want you to name each of the compounds shown here and give the charges of their cations and anions. I'm not gonna do the, all of these for you here, but if you wish, you can click a link here to a separate video in which I show you how to do a few of them on the board. And now this one. Which formula name pair is incorrect? Once again, I'm not gonna do all of these for you, but if you click the link here, it'll take you to a separate video in which I show you how to do a few of these on the board. And now another question. The formula for the compound formed between aluminum ions and phosphate ions is what? Now I'm not gonna do this for you at all, but I will give you a tip. Please keep in mind that aluminum always has a plus three charge in an ionic compound. And phosphate, well that's one of those polyatomic anions that I require you to memorize. You better know the charge. That takes us to the end of this video. Please stay tuned to the next one in which I'll begin by reminding you how to balance chemical equations. Until next time, my beloved students, have an enjoyable rest of your day.